In this next section, we're going to look at graphs of secant and cosecant functions. And technically, in section 6.5, we're going to look at secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent. Um, in the book, cotangent and tangent graphs are first, but I think I want to do secant and cosecant first, mainly because they relate closely to the sine and cosine functions that we just did. So we'll get to tangent graphs later. And what we see here is just a parent function for the secant function. Um, just a reminder that secant is the same thing as one over cosine. So secant of an angle is the same thing as one over cosine of that same angle. And the A, B, C, and D um, still represent that altitude and the shift, the horizontal shift, and especially with B where we have a period shift. Um, and then the D is a vertical shift. So a couple things that we're gonna first think about is um, again, secant is one over cosine and sometimes cosine can be zero. So if cosine of an angle is zero, then secant is going to be one over zero, and this is undefined. And if we think about um, graphs that we've had in the past where um, a number is not defined in our domain, we would often have a vertical asymptote. Okay, so we're just going to do some basic um, A equals secant of BX, where the amplitude is A, and again, the amplitude is a positive value if we have a negative A, that just means we're doing a flip. The vertical asymptotes happen where cosine of the angle is zero. And we are gonna actually graph, first of all, the, the basic parent function for the secant graph. And when we do that, I want to first look at the graph of cosine. So if we just are looking at the graph of cosine, we still have those A values, and in this case our A value is 1, and our B value here, um, there's no number multiplied by X, so it um, our B value is 1, so to get the period, I need 2 pi over B. In this case, if B is 1, my period is 2 pi. So I'm going to break up my x-axis. So here's 2 pi. Halfway between 0 and 2 pi is pi. This is pi over 2. And this is 3 pi over 2. And I'm just going to go a little bit in this direction. You'll see why in a minute, but this would be negative pi over 2. Now, if I think about my um, unit circle, and I, I'm looking for my five points here. So if I have cosine of 0, cosine of 0 is 1. If I do cosine of one-half, I'm going to have cosine of, not one-half, but pi over two. Cosine of pi over two is zero. Cosine of pi is negative one. And cosine of 
3 pi over 2 is 0. And then cosine of 2 pi is going to go back to 1. So I'm just going to lightly sketch in here what cosine looks like. So I'm going to start with 1. I'm going to go down to pi over 2, and then negative 1, and then 3 pi over 2, and then 1. So this is what cosine would look like. Now, if I continued in this direction, okay, I, I have that continued wave here. So if I'm doing the reciprocal of those values, the cosecant, I'm sorry, not cosecant, the secant of zero is going to be 1 over 1, which is 1. The secant of pi over 2 is going to be 1 over 0, which is undefined. Secant of pi, I'm going to flip this. It's still negative 1. Secant of 3 pi over 2 is going to be 1 over 0. And secant of 2 pi will be back up here at 1. All right, so if I plot now just these points, so where I have an undefined, okay, for where I have cosine of pi over 2 is 0, this is going to be a vertical asymptote because the reciprocal is going to be undefined. So I'm going to have undefined at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, and if I went in the other direction, I would have negative pi over 2. So these are some vertical asymptotes here. And now if I draw my graph, I'm going to use the points at the top of the, the maximum values here and my graph is going to approach those horizontal asymptotes. All right, so here was a maximum, here's a minimum. So I'm gonna have this go down here and I can, up here, I can have another um, five pi over two would be another maximum value, oops, would be another asymptote. Okay, so in this case, anytime I have an odd number, pi over two, is where I'm gonna have a vertical asymptote because that's where my values are undefined. Odd values of pi over two. So I can identify that, and you'll probably be asked to identify that, that the vertical asymptotes happen at every other pi over 2 value. Okay, so if I think about it, here's pi over 2, here's another pi over 2, but this is... Um, this is 2 pi over 2. Here's 3 pi over 2, so this would be an odd value. This is 4 pi over 2. It's even, so it's not a vertical asymptote. And this is 5 pi over 2, which is an odd value, and it would be a horizontal asymptote. Another way to write that is I have my x values are going to be 2 times a number minus 1 times pi. To get an odd number, I have to multiply a number by 2 
then I always have an even number, then minus one, and that gives me pi. All right, so that was kind of a, a, a difficult or a real quick introduction to secant graphs. Now let's look at another one. In example two, we have three secant of x. So this is very similar to my other problem. The only difference is now my altitude is three. Okay, my period, the length of my period stays the same. It's two pi over one, which is two pi. And, um, If I draw this in, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here. Now my altitude is three units. One, two, three down here. I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to end at two pi. Okay, and that's our same period for. Uh, cosine. All right, so again, secant is 1 over cosine. So now if I label my x-axis with the in five important points, I'm going to start at 0. I'm going to go to 2 pi. Half of 2 pi is pi. Half of pi is pi over 2. And half of the distance between pi and 2 pi is 3 pi over 2. All right, so if cotangent of 0 is 1, when I multiply it by 3, I get 3. So I'm still starting up here at, um, at 3. At pi over 2, I'm still going to intersect the x-axis. When I get to pi, Cosine of pi is negative 1. Multiply it by 3, I get negative 3. And then I'm going back here and then back up here. So again, I'm just drawing in my cosine values. Okay. And so there's cosine. And again, this would be negative pi over 2. Now, anywhere I have an x-intercept of 0, where cosine equals 0, like at pi over 2, the secant of pi over 2 is going to be 1 over 0. It's the reciprocal. So again, I'm going to have vertical asymptotes at odd multiples of pi over 2. So here's an odd multiple, even multiple, because this is two, 2 pi over 2, 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. This would be another asymptote. And I would have another one over here. And now I just need to draw in the, the parts of the graph that are going to approach my asymptotes. And I need another five pi over two here, vertical asymptote, so this kind of looks like this. All right, so this is secant three times the secant of x. Okay. Looking at this and identifying the domain and the range, okay, so the domain can be every x value except for when we get a cosine value of zero. Okay, so for my domain, I can state that my domain is all x except for when x is an odd multiple of pi over 2. 
Okay, add multiple of pi over two. I can also say that x cannot equal 2n minus 1 times pi. This is another way of restricting our domain so that where we have our vertical asymptotes, it's going to be an odd value of pi. Okay. Also, looking at this for our range, our range is going to be, and if, and if I go back and look at, I'm going to bring in another graph, the cosine of x. All right, so here's a graph of the cosine of x. My domain can be all real numbers. I can have any value here, but my range for the y values I have to be greater than or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to 1. So my y values are always between negative 1 and 1. Now in this case, my y values are always greater than 1 or however high my altitude is. So here, my y values are always 3 or, or greater, or they're negative 3 or smaller. So y is less than or equal to negative 3. Okay, I can't combine these and make one sentence because I got this big gap in the middle that doesn't work for secant of x. All right, so here's another one. This time got a little bit more things going on here. So to start off, we see that my altitude is two, and because it's negative, it's gonna be flipped. Okay, so instead of starting at one, we're gonna start at negative, and in this case, it'd be two. And then my B value is one half. So to find the length of my period, I have two pi over one half. And remember I, I said in a previous lesson that if my B value is small, like a fraction, my period is going to be longer. So in this case, two pi divided by a half multiply by the reciprocal, my period is 4 pi. So right now, if I draw, okay, so I need it to go to 4 pi. So I'm going from 0 to 4 pi. So I start at 0, and I'm going to end at 4 pi. And I need to put in those five points. So 0, 4 pi. Halfway is 2 pi. Halfway between 0 and 2 pi is pi. And here's 3 pi. All right, so my amplitude is 2. And now, since I'm still looking at secant, I want the inverse of cosine and cosine generally starts at one. Cosine of zero is one. If I did cosine of um, zero is one and then flip it and multiply it by two, I'm actually starting down here, okay? I'm still gonna have cosine of pi is zero. Now cosine of two pi I'm going to be up here at the top, and then back down, and then back down where I started. So here's cosine. 
right? So between zero and four pi. So where now are my asymptotes? My asymptotes are always at the x-intercepts. All right, so here's an x-intercept and here's an x-intercept. My next one here would be five pi. I can go over here to negative pi. Okay, so now I'm going to draw in those curves. So I'm going to start here and it's going to point down going towards the asymptotes. Now up towards the asymptotes and down towards the asymptotes. And there is my graph of negative 2 secant of 1 half x. Now let's look at a cosecant. And cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. All right. So if I graph the parent function um, with the reciprocal of sine, I'm going to have 1 over sine. And let's just look at the sine graph. So doing this here, my period for sine goes between 0 and 2 pi. So if I label my five points, this is 3 pi over 2 and pi over 2 and pi in the middle. And sine of 0, let's just write these down here, sine of 0 is 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of pi is 0. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And then I'm back to sine of 2 pi is 0. All right, so sine is starting here. I go up. I'm going to say this is 1. I'm going to come back down through pi. I'm going to go down to negative 1 and then come back up to pi. All right, so there's my sine wave. <clears throat> now again, my asymptotes are going to be at the x-intercepts here because my x-intercept, if I did the reciprocal of this, I'm going to have 1 over 0, which is undefined. So this is not part of my domain. 0 is not part of my domain. Neither is pi, and neither is 2 pi. All right. So now my vertical asymptotes are going to be at 0, 1 pi, 2 pi. They're all going to be multiples of pi. Okay, so I could say that for my domain, my x values, um, for my x values, x cannot equal n times pi where n is an integer. Okay, so I can't have multiples of pi right here. And the last thing I'm going to do on this is I'm just going to draw in my, kind of looks like a parabola here that approaches these asymptotes. And there we have it. I could put another one up here if I want to. Okay. But it's very similar to the secant graph. It's just shifted a little bit because sine of 0 is 0 and cosine of 0 is 1. So if this were 0, if this was my y-axis between here and here, I have the cosine function. So 
the cosine and sine functions are just a shift of each other, and we're going to talk about shifts um, next week sometime. Last example. Here, my altitude is 4. My B value is 2. So to find the length of my period, I need 2 pi divided by 2, which is B, which is pi. So to go one length, I'm going to have a length of pi. My period is going to be pi. So let's draw this in. And I'm going to make this longer because I have one, two, three, four as my altitude. Okay. I'm going to go all the way to pi. This is pi halves. This is three pi over two, four, sorry. And this is pi over four. And I'll count that out here in a second. Pi, 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4. All right, so sine of an angle is going to start at 0. My altitude is 4, so I'm going to go up, back down here, down, and then back up. So here's my sine. And I'm going to put in my vertical asymptotes. And with my vertical asymptotes, we're going to define those in a minute as part of our domain. Draw those sections in. So here I'm starting at 0. I ended at pi because that's the length of one period. And for my um, asymptotes, I have an asymptote at zero, pi over two, and then pi. All right, so I'm looking for multiples of pi over two. 0, 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2. That's where my asymptotes are. So I can write that my vertical asymptotes or my domain x cannot equal multiples of pi over 2. So and n is in an integer. Okay, so anywhere I have a pi over 2 on my graph, my sine will be 0, which means my cosecant will be undefined. Okay, and we're going to do some practice with these in class.